I'm going to talk focus mainly on the site selected uh, MS Craft site selector permission, and that is what I'm going to talk about. Just just a little bit about me. I work as a senior consultant in uh, modern work domain in Microsoft, uh, and my expertise is with design, architect, development, and Azure. And I'm I'm a big fan of this community. I attend this community many times, and uh, and I have a lot of my uh, fans here. I, I'm a big fan of a few of uh, the presenters here. So, so what is access control system? So basically what uh, this agenda is about accessing SharePoint content or SharePoint list or libraries using headless account. What we have used in past and what my customer has used in past is access control system, which is retired. And I will point to the VESA's blog post as well. The retirement was in 2018. And the better way to do this is uh, using the site selected MS Craft permission. Prior to site selected, we used to give full permission, which was not a good thing to have have because then uh, that particular app has access to everything, but site selected allows you to do the granularity. Uh, where, when I did that, I explained them, my customer about the site selected, how it works. Uh, they said it's a lot of work for the admins. So I have proposed to them some uh, proof of concept on automating and governing this as using the tracker uh, this particular site selected, and that is what I'm going to show. So these are my three points, uh, and I'll demo it. Uh, and if you are not aware, uh, this, is, this is a slide here. This is this this group is a SharePoint group. Uh, we used to do app reg new, app reg new, and then you select the client ID and client secret, and then uh, you provide the access to site uh, or web or a list using app INV. And uh, there is a special XML file. I'm not going to get into details of that, uh, but this is retired. It is working as if now it is working and it will work. There is no thing mentioned that it will not work for now, but the better or recommended approach is using the site selected. So what was my customer need was that they needed a site, around 200 sites uh, access using client ID and client secret, which would have made things worse because they would have to create one-on-one -on -one ACS app and client secret for entire uh, all these site collections. And that is not a good thing to do. So the better approach would be to use the site selector. And the, what site selector does is it allows application to access subset of sites and site collection uh, uh, without signed in user. As I said, it's without any logged in user. So that's that's the that is what is required. And uh, in the in the graph API call, uh, you have the API REST API as um, the, as shown in the screen right now. Uh, but what I have used is I have used the PNP PowerShell commands, and that in turn call the similar REST API which is shown here. And it is showing only the CRUD, CRUD operation, but it's only the create operation. But there is read and write operations as well, uh, and and list operations. So that is get and put, right? So that all this thing is uh, already uh, coded in the uh, PNP PowerShell. So I have used that. Uh, to show them um, how to use this particular um, permission. So to use this permission, you will need two Azure AD app. One Azure AD app will be sites.fullcontrol.all. And this particular Azure AD app will be only allowed by the admins to provide the granular permission using the second app. So there will be two apps, the client who are going to Pro write program against will be using the second Azure AD app, and that Azure AD app will be uh, either allowed one or many site collection, and it can be read or write. So there are the two grant permission you can provide. And my demo will not be any UI or anything, just uh, the PowerShell commands. In that PowerShell command, what I have to do is using the uh, using the Connect PNP online using the first Azure AD app, which is the admin app, uh, I would connect. And then after that, I would create grant PNP Azure AD app permission, app site permission call. And that will allow me to add a write 
or a read permission for a site which is applied. So I, I would add, if it is 200 sites, I would run 200 times grant permission for write, and that particular Azure AD app will have only 200 sites access, not entire tenant. That's the beauty of this particular permission. Now, I am going to share what I have here is on my demo tenant, I already have Azure AD app, which is the first app I talked about called admin app. And this admin app has this permission, as I said in the slide deck, it has an uh, sites select sites dot full control all. So this is required and this particular app will be only accessible by admins who will be providing access using the sites uh, for the site selected. And I've used the uh, best practices way. Uh, basically, I've created a, a, a certificate rather than a client secret. Uh, I, it was just a test, but I'm using the certificate and using certificate, I will get an access token. And then after getting the access token, I will add a permission for a site for this particular tenant or a test site to read list or write into the library. And then the second app which I have, thank you. Second app I have is the app, which is the app the client will use, the programmer will use, or developer will use. You do not want to share with them, them the admin app, but you share them the client app. And that client app, as I said in the slide deck, will have API permission for site selected. I have provided for both SharePoint as well as Graph because sometimes PNP uses SharePoint API, sometimes it uses Graph API. So I just gave them both of them, and this is what I would add. Now let's assume that this is the app which we want to use to connect first. I still have time for finishing my demo. Uh, so I am going to connect to this app, which basically gave me the connection. Right? I, and then I'm going to say, hey, get me all the list of this app. And as you can see, this particular app ID, having this app ID and secret or your uh, 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 secret or a, or a PFX file doesn't give you automatically permission to that particular app, or you cannot just immediately access that particular site. Admin has to do one more extra step, and that is where I am here on the admin script. In the admin script, I'm connecting using the admin app ID, and obviously I have password, and which is hidden somewhere down on the right side. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this and connect to the admin app. Okay. After connecting to admin app, I have some of the PowerShell commands, PNP PowerShell commands, which is I just did the GCN on it. And those GCN is showing me get, grant, revoke, and set. Well, obviously, grant is post call, get is the list call, and the revoke is the delete call and the set is the put call or update call in the MS graph point of view. If you could see the documentation, that's what behind the scene uh, this particular PNP PowerShell commands does. So what I'm going to do here, I just did the uh, I just did the connection to the admin ID app, and then I'm going to say, uh, okay, then I'm going to initialize some client variable. I did not do so. So let me initialize that. And then now I'll say, hey, get me all the permission for the site called test one and for this particular client app ID. And as I as you can see here, I have none. I have not granted anything yet. So I'm going to say, hey, grant this permission. And when it is granting the permission, it is giving the permission for the read, as you can see here. So now if I go back to my client demo, and I will connect to client again, and just because the context has switched now on me. So now I connected. So what happened here is I connected the client ID, and now I will say, hey, get me all the list within that particular site collection, and I do get that. But let's try adding something into it. And when I try to add it, the granular permission is such that I just said, hey, it's only read permission. This is access denied. So if your customer or if your 
developers want that right permission, what you would do is again, I have to do this thing for the demo purpose. I have to connect to the uh, PNP online, connect PNP online because my contact switched and I, I probably have the same uh, variables. I just apply it anyway. And I will say, get this permission. And when I get this permission, I get this permission object, as you can see here. This is the permission object. It has a role which is not showing. I think it's a bug in the PNP or I don't know where it is, but uh, maybe it is in graph. But this is the app which is having an access. Now, instead of granting the permission as a read, what I'm going to say, hey, now make change to from read to write. So that's what I'm going to run. And when I run that, I do get that object again and role is showing me as a write. Once that is done, what I can do, I can go to demo script again, and I say connect PNP online, and let's see my get call works. Get will work because it's just a write now. It is, and now we will try to write something into the list. And when I write to the list, and a list is called test one, uh, and the site is also called test one, so I should have something in the list. So that is what I just added seven seven. Yesterday I was testing something, so that is uh, that is that. Now, for some reason you want to have that particular uh, permission taken away. The last thing is I would do uh, what what I would do is just go into the admin app again uh, and and then run this thing again, and I will say get me the permission. I got the permission object. Then I will say revoke this permission. So having now uh, app ID and app secret for the client, for the developer, this is revoking the permission, right? So now we are back to square one when we started this. But wait a minute. So af after all this demonstration, uh, admin, admins were saying that is too much work for them. If we, they want to do 2,000 sites, what happens then? So that's where I have written the blog post, and you should be able to see my blog post. In the blog post, uh, one, I, I just demonstrated what I was just demonstrating about all the demo scripts. It is right here. And then my blog post, two is where I have defined uh, an architecture where you have a tracker. The tracker is tracking about all your apps and what kind of sites you are giving permission to. There is a logic app, which is always listening to this particular tracker app. Once that particular logic app defines what, what this particular user wants to do, whether you want to give a read or write access or grant or revoke. And accordingly, uh, Azure function will do the job for you uh, for that uh, particular admin and they can do so. So now let's, let's do the same thing what I did uh, with, with that. So I'm going to provide this particular list as an item saying here, uh, let me go and click the list uh, site name. So site uh, URL. So I will provide the site URL and then app ID. And this particular app ID is basically a lookup list and I'm providing an app ID. And I'm saying, I want to provide a read access. Let's, let's provide the right access right away. And I want to grant first time. And what happens here is behind the scene, the logic app is working here and logic app is going to pick it up. Uh, every one minute, this logic app is working and it will pick it up in a, in a minute. And there is a uh, Azure function behind the scene and I will share the code and the code is also shared on the, my blog post. If you go to my blog post, it is there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on this logs. So you will see the logs, what is happening here. Uh, and it should be running now in a minute. It takes 30 seconds or so. so. Okay, come on. Okay, it should be, yeah, there it is. So it started ready. What it did, it uh, item added or item modify event, uh, it picked up. And then what it does is it um, formulates the JSON input information for the Azure function. What Azure function does, and this is this is the similar, uh, there it is, okay, there it is. So this is the JSON object it creates, whether you want to revoke or whether you want to write or read operation and which site URL and what is the client ID. 
that is passed and that is passed through that particular list. And if I go to here, as you can see, this particular Azure function ran when I was sharing other screen and it did the thing which I did show you in the PowerShell ISE. So live, we revoked that permission, if you remember, right? So what I did, I revoked the permission. Now let's see whether it has the right permission or not. So hopefully I'll go to demo client and then I'll connect to the client, right? I connect to the client and then I say, hey, let me see. So I'm back again and I am able to uh, add this. So now what the point I'm trying to make here is now if I want to have more sites or more sites for this particular app ID, I can keep on adding that without writing this function. And on top of that, if I want to say revoke a permission for a particular site for this particular app, all they have to do is click on it and just say revoke. And the function behind the scene, the function will revoke it as well as uh, if as well as it will revoke and it will uh, delete an entry from here. So for example, if I had, let's say 200 sites here and I just wanted to remove one site and revoke that permission for that particular site, I can do so. And that will be done in a minute. So let me refresh the screen again. Let's go to run history again and refresh. So there is a timer for one minute uh, and it just uh, item modified event comes in uh, and it changes it. So let, let me, while that is doing, uh, I am going to just walk through the function uh, logic app here, which is very simple. Uh, I'm just checking whether uh, grant or revoke I need to do or I need to do read or write. Accordingly, I will formulate a JSON object, right? So I'm just doing that, I'm checking. And after checking that I, in the body function, I create an action, whether it is a read, uh, sorry, grant or revoke. Uh, the client app ID is already passed to me uh, in the in the item itself. Uh, display name of the app is plus passed to me, and then read or write is passed to me, and site URL is also passed to me. And I have one more minute, I think, uh, and I think sh I should be, that particular thing should be revoked now. So if I go back here, and here, so as you can see, this permission is now revoked. So if I go back to the function app and now I do click on it and then I say, get me the list, it will say 403. So that is what revoked. And and the engine, just last, last point, engine is very simple, very simple, it just, it just does the if condition if it's just the path of revoke and revoke and grant and if it is already granted if it is read then do the right if user has asked for right and things like that so it's very simple code but that's pretty much it from my side back to you david awesome thank you pangaj that's really really innovative the way you've set that up mm -hmm.